Hey, it's the Ripcord. I was uh, working on this project and I uh, thought it might be interesting to make a little movie about how I might work on some, something like this. Nobody asked me to, but um, I thought I it was interesting enough to do it. Um, a difficult thing when you're working with vectors is to make it look like an object is intertwining with another one. So I have this snake on a pole and um, this has a name. Um, I don't know what it is. I can't think. I was an art major. This is a medical symbol. But anyway, I'm working on this today and um, thought I'd um, just make a movie here. What I'm going to do is start by giving this snake uh, an outline. And you can experiment to see how thick of an outline you want to do it. I'm going to do eight points. Behind the fill. I can do scale with image, but that's actually not going to be necessary because we're going to convert the outline to an object. I'm going to give the pole an outline too. Then I'm going to copy the pole. Turn it red so I can see what's going on. And paste it. I'll turn that blue. You want to keep everything different colors so you can kind of keep track of what you're doing. I'll draw a little thing here, just a little rectangle. And I'll turn that red. Now I'm going to zoom in just a bit so I can see what's going on here. And I'm going to, we want his head in the front, and then this next coil is going to be in the back, behind the pole. So I'm going to go ahead and trim this pole here, like that. I'm going to, it's good to do this step by step so you don't get confused. Trim it again. Now this next coil here is in the front of the pole, so we're going to leave that alone. Come down here. Trim it. And we're trimming the pole, not the snake. Down here. One more down here. And you got to be real careful because this is sort of a tight design. It kind of, if you trim off the wrong part, if you trim the wrong part, it's um, going to mess the drawing up. So or we don't really need to trim that, but I will anyway. And then zoom back out. And you can watch as much of this as you feel like because it's sort of a step by step operation. I'm going to break this apart. I'm going slow just so nobody loses track of it. I'm going to get rid of every other one of these. Then I'm going to give these an outline, and I'm doing this separately. I could have done that in the first place, but it makes it easier to trim. And I'll make this outline uh, orange. Once again, you want to use different colors so you don't get confused about what object you're working with. And uh, once again, I don't need scale with image because I'm going to turn the outline into an object. And I'm going to go up here to weld. And I'm going to 
do these individually here. You can marquee select that, weld it to itself. So now it's one object. And I'm going to zoom back in here and make sure that everything looks okay before I start my trimming. So I'm going to trim this. Let's see here. I may have forgotten one step. And I did. I want to turn my snake's uh, outline into a, an object as well because I'm going to be trimming it. Okay, so now the snake doesn't have an outline. The yellow is its own separate object. So I'm going to trim the snake with this blue box. I'm going to trim the yellow. And then that looks good. So I can get rid of that. I'll come down here do the same thing but as you can see I'm kind of getting into the parts of the snake I don't want to trim so I'm gonna trim that down just a little bit like I said this is time consuming but at the end you'll see that it results in a very clean um, object which is desirable because when you send something to a service bureau or for anyone else to work on that's not familiar with your design, um, you want to keep it as simple as possible because if there's a lot of objects, for instance, if I was using Smart Fill to do all this, we'd end up with a lot of objects that we'd have to either weld together or they'd have to figure it out and there's a chance they could lose one of it, one of them. Um, there's, there's all kinds of chances for all kinds of things to happen. So. I believe that unless you're just working it on something for your own shop that you're going to work on yourself and nobody else is going to work on it, then you might not want to take the extra steps to do this. But if anyone else is going to be working on your artwork, you want them to have as few chances as possible to make a mistake. So that's why I like to make my objects as simple as I can. So I'm, once again I'm just trimming using the blue I'm trimming the snake and I'm also trimming the yellow now you can see that it looks as though the snake is coming around the, his pole and uh, turn that white. Now the eye, you might be wondering what happened to that. That just went into the background. So now I have three objects. The snake, the white um, outline, and the pole. I could leave it at that. Um, but what I'm going to do is take it a couple steps more. Uh, the, the eye is its own um, object, and it has to stay that way unless we do something to the pole, because if we combine it with the snake, you'll see the pole in the background. So what I'll do is make a circle here, a little bit bigger than the eye. And I'll Combine that circle with the pole. Sorry. I'll combine that circle with the pole. So now we can combine the eye with the snake. And it works because there's a, a hole in the pole, if you will. I'm going to use my white. Once again, you don't have to go through as many steps as this, but the more 
you work on it, the less chance there's going to be for someone to make a mistake when they work with it. So if I use this white to trim the pole, I can actually get rid of that. Now if I turn my, my pole uh, black, this is the effect I was going for. The snake is nicely wrapped around the pole, and it's just uh, two objects, the pole and the snake. So I've found that you can't combine it any farther. Maybe you can, and I haven't figured it out yet, but this is as simple as I could make it. And uh, anyway, sorry for the long video, but I hope you've enjoyed it. And uh, take a moment to, to try this out. It's an it's a interesting technique, and um, hope your next project goes well.